survey, and the survey was shared a few different places. I'd say the most uh, popular way of getting responses was from the, the city utility bills. So those were shared with the, every single bill that went out uh, in the month of May. So people there had the option of printing it out and then turning in with their next bill or following a link to do it online. And it was also shared with the city's Facebook page and at various meetings, including Park Board, uh, the EDA, Planning Commission, City Council, and Chamber of Commerce. So, let's see. Now I'll go right into the responses for each question. So the first one was, what's your gender identity? So it was about a 60-40 split there between uh, males and females who responded. Uh, next question is, are you a resident of the city of Casson? So pretty overwhelming majority there, almost 100% there were residents of the city, although there were a few few responses of people who don't live in city limits who also respond to the survey. Let's see. And then this question talks about the number of kids that you have in your household and like what age ranges they're in. So it was about a 50-50 split there between households that have children and those that do not. And out of the households that do have children, you, you can see there in the breakdown of you know what age ranges of those kids that they have in their household. So just important to think about as we think about the planning for our future of our parks. These are the kids that we have in our city. So if we think, you know, five to ten years from now, those kids are going to be older. What sort of activities, what sort of amenities are they going to be looking for in our park system? And then this question is about how often do you visit a park in Casson? So from there you can see that about 50% of the respondents said that they visit a park at least once a month with almost a third saying that they visit a park once a week or even daily. And then this question here was kind of rating um, the, your level of agreement with a number of different statements. So there's the first question here is, uh, when I visit a park, I tend to go with at least one other person rather than alone. And so with that one and with all of these questions here, most people a uh, pretty large majority of people either agree or strongly agree. So with that first question, it's showing that most people, when they go to a park, they, they're going with someone else. They're not going by themselves. And so that trend continues with other questions like whether or not someone is familiar with the parks and what they offer, or if there's a park that's near their home and is, has amenities that are accessible to their household, or whether or not they feel safe at a park in Casson. And finally, if parks are an important part of your overall, overall well-being. So pretty strong support here, I would say, with all of these statements. So good to see there. And then this question here talks about specific amenities that people prioritize within our park system. So the top choices here uh, were playgrounds, restrooms, picnic tables, and shelters. So that those were the things that the respondents prioritized the most out of the parks. And it's also notable to mention the wheelchair accessi accessibility and inclusivity that was kind of spurned by that April Park Board meeting where we had those uh, visitors come and speak about that. So good to see that they're represented in the results of the survey. And then the final question from the survey was asking uh, just just about comments that you would like to share. It was meant to be uh, sharing uh, what sort of things you'd like to see in the future of the parks, but of course, you know, people who responded used it, used it as an opportunity to complain <laughs> or offer praise about the parks. Um, but so here you just have an exam some examples of the most common things. Some of them are about par uh, parks in specific, so I kind of wrote those down there, but lots of different ideas from people who respond to the survey. Anything from dog parts, more uh, surveillance and lighting in, at various parks to uh, everyone wants more pickleball courts. <laughs> They're very popular. Uh, one of the respondents said it was the fastest growing sport in America. So good that we have some, but they all want more. <laughs> um, so that's, that's kind of the end of my survey slides I have here. Uh, are there any questions from the board? I was kind of surprised to see that safety. Yeah. Was it? It so, was like, 
That they yeah. didn't feel safe in the park? They didn't feel safe in the park. Has there ever been that any yeah. issues about that? Or <laughs> fourth one there. Uh, yeah, you know, so. The middle's neutral, so. Yeah. If they don't go to the park enough, then they might be neutral. We don't. Yeah. Know, if they <coughs> never go to the park, they they might have picked neutral. Yeah. If they're rarely going to the park, they might pick neutral just because they don't go enough to know if it's safe. Yeah. And and similarly, if you go to the park and you just have one bad experience, then you know then you can go on here and talk about it, even though it's not really representative of the vast majority of people who respond to this survey. Mm -hmm. They say that they feel safe in Casson Park. So you didn't put in there the uh, the age range age range of the person responding. No, that was not a question included in the survey. But I figured so we'd be <laughs> curious to see older generation. I'm going to say you know, if they're 50 or older. Yeah. Hence, hence probably the pickleball courts. I would assume at that point. But just kind of try to get a feel for you know what age group are you that you're representing in this in this survey. Sure. I, mean, I, I probably missed in the survey. Okay. I, I made an inference just based on what I saw to go back a slide in. Uh, uh, the floor. One. With 50% of people not having children, they're either young couples just yeah. moving into town, or they're couples that have lived here a long time and they no longer have kids. Yeah, like empty nesters. Yeah. So that, that's a big chunk of people. Yeah. If you go back another slide, it tells you uh, one more. <laughs> <laughs> that our females in town pay the bills. <laughs> <laughs> if, if most of our results came from our water bills, that's right. Two <laughs> percent were female. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I think the moms tend to take the kids to the park a lot more, too. I don't yeah. know. Some or dads sometimes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. I will say I am doing tiny tot lessons with my kids, <laughs> not mom. You. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I had to go to time at the pool years ago when Nora was young enough, and you would see a 60 40 female to male ratio. I would say that's fair. That's kind yeah. of what it's at right and now. Depending on the day, but most sure. days was 60 40. Sure. <clears throat> um, you go back to all the things they want. Um, Here or uh, the top that section? One. Last uh, the last one, <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, I, uh, the community garden stuck out to me. I think that's a inexpensive way to to find a place where people can congregate, interact. I mean, besides water and the materials to build a, a garden, I mean, you're not looking. You, we have space, I would assume, at one of our parks. Um, I was just in Hill City, Minnesota, which is a population of 600, and it's a very low-income community, but they just built a brand-new fenced-in community park at uh, garden and it looks amazing. Um, Manorville has a small one already. They've got rules in place. I think that'd be something we could look at because it's inexpensive. When you look at these things, what are things that we can do cheap, quick, and aren't going to add a lot of stress and workload to our city staff? We have the space for it. Yeah. The extension service offers a community garden and it's up at St. John's. Yeah. Um, and so I'm not sure how much of a duplication that would be. Um, this is the first year probably that that's been approaching full. Yeah. There isn't a whole lot of interest in it up there, yeah. but maybe that's an advertising and thing. How well is it advertised with outside of the church? It's, it's through the extension service, the, the Dodge County Extension oh. Service, so I'm not sure how they advertise. It just happens to be on the on the church property. Yeah, I had a pamphlet or a sheet that was dropped off at the hardware store that we had posted for community gardens. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, I think I probably pulled it down three four weeks ago. Um, don't know how many people pay attention, but I don't know if it was Casson. So da the a, a extension service does have it in multiple communities, I think. And that's where what seems to ring a bell in my mind is West Concord, but I went to post a West Concord thing on my store because I've got I try to do the Castor community thing, so so it might have been the mm -hmm. I, I envision the, <coughs> the red and blue logo community garden yeah. flyer that was put out, but But you're right, it's really cheap and um, one thing the church doesn't have is a source of water, and if, if there was a place with water, that would be a big plus for... 
Uh, we have an enclosed dog park, it just happens to be in Manorville. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So keep advertising that. We we gave money towards that years I th ago. I think yeah. that's, uh, we're, we're not going to go any further in our parks with that, no. in my opinion. No, I think we've already helped create one, and it's it's three miles down the road. And I'd veto drinking fountains unless it was just a water bottle fill station. Drinking fountains are gross. Mm -hmm. Kids don't know how to use them. Oh. Yeah, no, I and I don't disagree with that. What's a pump track? Yeah. <laughs> I had to Google it too. Okay, <laughs> <So> that, <laughs> like, uh, I'm not the only one that doesn't know. Yeah, um, it's it's meant for bikes. It kind of has like small oh, wheels sure, or whatever. Okay. So yep. like when you go over it, you're not like really meant to pedal so much. You're supposed to like move your sure. body to like move the bike forward and just okay. kind of like use the momentum to go over the hills. Yeah, <laughs> interesting. So I actually I was approached by a company called what was it uh, NFS the National Fitness or NFA or something National Fitness Association um, they essentially want to build what we have on our bike trails but glorified as far as you know big concrete pad more availability for working out. I, I mean, I think it's great. I don't know how much it would get used. Um, there's some grants and stuff that they would provide for us, but ultimately our cost would probably be 100000 maybe just a little under. So where we're at realistically, that's far on the back burners. But, I mean, it was a great idea. But for something that gets used, what, three months of the year, four months of the year, probably not. Um, it was it was pretty unique though what they were presenting and but that's definitely probably not quite something that would fit with the need for in my opinion like playground modulars. Some of these we have planned splash pad. Yeah, that's our goal for Lions Park. Uh, Ronnie had an archery range at one point in his. <laughs> that might I don't know if that's still there. Not in one of the four different models he had. Now we're down to two I think. Right. Um, trees, I think you've planted some trees lately at the Veterans Park. Yep. I, would just, I would say benches is something I've had a couple people mention yep. to me. Is like and watching your kids, there's not a lot of places to sit. And we actually, you know, talking with um, Mark Packard, he's got a handful of benches ready to go. So it's just, I'm trying to time it out with the Eagles project and a couple other projects. This is where we can do these pads and then get all these benches placed. Um, so I mean I think benches is a pretty easy one that we can get done for cheap. Surveillance cameras, that's, that's the same. We'll, we'll get into that one because I got some stuff on that and I know Christine <laughs> does, so. That wasn't me, you couldn't prove it. <laughs> and I swear it was that tie-dye on camera. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lots of people were this. You mentioned the expanded bike trail network Byron is trying to work with us and the Douglas Trail in Olmstead County to connect from Casson to Byron that would eventually connect to all the way to Douglas Trail. So there's some options there that are being explored. Sure. We've got the safe routes of school that goes all the way around town as well, so that's been updated in the last year. I think you guys, did you guys talk about that 8th Street extension, right, from like Lyons to the Dump Road? At one point yes, in the council? I know that was a yeah, hot and topic. Have a, I believe, well, we saw several different models from Brandon, and yep. I think one of the ones we liked had a bike path on it. Not a new bike path, but having a buffer between a, the road, which would become bike path, sure. a place to plow snow, and then where you would drive. Um, because we don't want to change the road itself, it's just we're redesigning the purpose right. of it. I know that's a pretty hot one yeah. to talk there's about. A lot of, there's no sidewalks there. Correct. And so making it a bike only space. On, I can't remember if it's the east or west side. I think it's the east side because it would line up with right. the west right. side, right? Well, the west side wouldn't line up with the dump road. Oh, sure, right. Okay. East, east would if you stayed on the yep. east, which would line up with West Park, and it would line up eventually so you wouldn't have to do an L to yeah. get on the dump road. Right, path. okay. Um, I think, well, I can't remember. It's been probably three months since we talked about it, but there is, sure. we are looking at that for expanded bike trail, so adding that piece in. We just added four pickleball courts. 
to the library, or not the library park, the veterans park. Um, they have to move the nets. Are they bringing them out and putting yep. them away consistently? For the most part, yeah. yeah. There's been a couple talks, but for the most part, yeah. You're going to get some people that complain when they're not put out. Yeah, I, and, and it's, it's new to us. It's, you know, so it's a whole different thing for the, the aquatic center to, to pull them back in. And, you know, we said one night, you know, make sure you get the nets in. Well, they took that to a whole new level, and they just took the nets off the frames. Yeah. So, which is fine, you know. I, yeah. But it, it'll, we'll get it figured out. This is going to be a trial and error type year, so. Are they being used quite a bit? Have you witnessed much? To be honest with you, no. They're not. I haven't seen anybody there. And at, at the I, I will give you my honest opinion. It wasn't done right. Oh, really? We should have, absolutely, we should have tore the entire court out, and we should have resurfaced it, because the way that they did the surfacing, I mean, there's, the complaints are that there's dead spots. Well, the problem is we took whatever, you know, what is it, a 50-year-old court, if not more? and we tried to fill cracks that are three inches thick. Okay, so there's a problem. They just filled the cracks, seal coated it, put this beautiful plastic you know, layer on it, which it looks great, it really does. But as I walk across it, I can feel my feet going with the surface of the ground. You know, my opinion is we definitely should have completely tore it out, resurfaced it, put that layer on there, and we wouldn't have people complaining about it. Yes. Can we go back and take out what's underneath and still put that back? We on can, now? yeah. I mean, Maybe next year. I think we now have that. it'll be a challenge probably to put those squares back, you know, in the correct order. Um, I'm sure the the company that did it, they could, they probably have a way of doing it, you know, like marking pieces or whatever. Um, yeah, I just think it w we would have been better off putting the little bit of extra money into resurfacing it. You know, I think Ronnie, I actually was looking through his quotes. He had a quote for, I think it was 261000 and that was with concrete. That wasn't with blacktop. That was with them tearing the old stuff out, tearing the posts out, and redoing it with concrete. And that's 261000 We put, what, 90-something into it? We could have tore it out ourselves. You know, essentially done what we did with Lions Park. Yeah. Um, and it's fairly inexpensive to blacktop. Yeah. But that's it's not something that, I mean, we're not... We're not screwed to say, for lack of better terms, so I mean, we can still redo it. Yeah. But that's kind of what I've heard from pickleball players is that there's a lot of dead spots, which I didn't even know that the pickleball hits the court. I'm very unfamiliar with it. Yeah, about yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm very unfamiliar with it, so. It's just like tennis, just in a short version. So that that's the only thing that I've heard from pickleball players. I mean, they love that fenced-in one, and partially that's because they don't have to go shake the ball, you know. So, but I think I have seen some use out of it, so I'm not saying it's a lost cause. And maybe another pickleball net over by the one we already have. I would love to do another court well, over there. We have more people at that stage. Because I've seen, I've drove by and I've seen people waiting, you know. Okay. It's like they almost have like a little match going on between four teams or whatever <laughs> it is. Did we save any of the limestone from that garden in the... Yes. Is, it, is there enough good pieces to make uh, just a one-level garden in that same spot? There's water right there. Uh, I honestly would have. I would have to go and look. I don't know how much was saved. I don't. I really don't. And I don't know if all the pieces would be. It depends how we want to do it. I don't know if there's curved pieces or if they're straight. You know, with the way that flower garden was. I would have to go up there and figure out. You know, we'd have to lay them out and kind of see where we're at with well, that. We could do rectangle or, you know, right. whatever works. But I would just like to see some flowers in that park. Sure. Um, and with that water fountain right there, I still think that's a great spot. Um, although it's, like, for the festival, it's kind of a pain because it's right in the center of a big, you know, area right. where, we, where we can put stuff. But um, I would like us to... 
I know actually Tim brought this up to me right when I started about the whole veterans memorial thing up there. Um, I would really like us to see, do something different, like make a a real memorial. I mean, what I see up there is kind of a joke, in my opinion. And they really would like it up in that area where it is, because it's older people that are walking out there to see it. And sure. I talked to Dick Denny about it, and he said, well, it's kind of nice to have it right there, so if people get tired, they can sit on the on the picnic tables in the shelter and stuff. And he said, up by the road so people can see it instead of walking out into the middle of the park. Yeah. He yeah. didn't like that idea. I, I'm okay with where it's at. It just, I think yeah. we need to it needs something, do yeah. a little more with that. It does, yeah. Ian, I'm sorry to make you stand up there. There you go. This is a good discussion. Good discussion. <laughs> but, but this is spurring all the different yeah. thought processes that we've, you know. Is, yeah. Is there a way to make it so that we can see short term versus long? Like, I look at a baseball sports complex. That's long term. Yeah. 20 years out. Yeah. Versus a garden. A garden or improving the lighting or surveillance. Those are short term things. Yeah. Um, even the splash pad seems kind of like a long-term thing um, right. as the park grows. Um, but so we can start budgeting for those long-term projects, pick one or two that we really think are sure. our best bang for our buck. And, you know, yeah. you know what would be a, another quick one would be the golf driving range because you can use the little wiffle ball golf balls. You know, the ones that go 30 feet. Yeah, you're not going to get people that are going to want to get those. <laughs> 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 you know, it was a little backyard. That's you. As far as a kid, he went over to the neighbors to pick it back up. <laughs> Fall I back used, to I old school. real golf balls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're a young pop, see? Yeah. I don't know. You look at that one in, in Byron. It's gone. Know, they never, that didn't get used, so it's now gone. I don't know. Well, we have a golf course. They have a driving range. Manorville. They don't. Does. They don't have the driving range no. here anymore? No. What am I thinking? Oh, I'm they thinking, I'm thinking Dodge Center. They did have a short I'm thinking Dodge Center. putting green, too. Back right. I'm thinking Dodge They are center. building a putting green out there oh, yeah. in oh, the yeah. middle of nowhere. Uh -huh. um, this is, we're not getting into that. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess that's like a different kind of driving range. So. <laughs> okay. Well, well, I did save, I saved this PowerPoint. So, I mean, I can help distinguish what, you know, Long term versus what we could do, you okay. know, within the next year or two, as far as needs and costs and stuff like that. So, thank yeah, you, Ian. Yeah, if you start putting numbers behind those, it kind of gives mm -hmm. us a general feel for cost. I mean, yeah, they're generic and they're obviously could be a strewed, but you know, community garden, 500 bucks. That's just for dirt or whatever it's going to take, but or probably just more to put the water in. So, okay. Thanks, Ian. All right. Appreciate it. Anybody, any other questions or comments from anybody? No, before we move on. Okay. Thank you, Ian. Okay, request for a Castle Aquatic Center donation from the Castle and Wrestling Fundraiser. What do we got on that? So, actually, they did email my personal account. I thought they just emailed Jan. Um, they are looking for, they're doing their fundraising tournament. Um, so I don't know. They're, they're looking for some sort of pool pass, I'm assuming. Um, what was it for? for next year? Yeah, f well, the fundraising event's the August 4th, so I would assume it's for next year. Um, it's like an auction thing that they're going for again. Yeah. They do this every year. And, and all proceeds are going, well, yeah, so it's an auction thing, and all proceeds go to the, the youth and varsity wrestling program. They're looking for a pool credit for family, redeemable, um, day, evening swim, 30 to $50. Um, so it's kind of, I don't see why not. It just depends what we want to do. See, this is this is why I, this is good that we're bringing it here because I would say yes, but I don't know those. Any time, my thought on the city side of it is, you give away a pass for fifty dollars, but that fifty dollars still has to be passed on to someone else. Sure. To help 
offset any cost. So that then gets offset to either the taxpayer, it's fifty dollars, or it's so or it's the passes go up with nickel or whatever. It, it, you, those, and I understand that. So my next thing was actually a gal from Dodge County. She's a social worker. Um, she contacted me. Her name is Jody. Um, she said in the past we've given away a pool pass to one of her kids. Um, so I said, well, I'll have to bring this up at Park Board. She's like, well, we've done this in the past. And I said, well, I'm not a, I'm, I'm new, so. We don't give pool passes. Okay. But I know people can get them through some CAC. Sure, okay. <clears throat> Going back to your thing, in the past we used to give, when we had the, like, books of 10 passes, we did up to, like, mm -hmm. 10 passes in a book. At any, you know, did, yeah. yeah, but we got rid of the passbook, so now we would just have to do like a gift certificate of X amount of dollars to be spent at the, you know, for admission fees or something. I don't have a problem with it. I just, my concern is you're giving away taxpayer mm -hmm. money. Yeah. Yep. I would give them a day pass. That's what I do. A family up to five or something a day pass. That's enough. I don't think that we need to give them an annual pass. No, no, no. I, and they're not asking for that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, maybe a day pass, but, you know, no more than five, if that. I mean, most people have two kids and two adults. Well, I mean, what is, what's a day pass? $7? So that would be like So, so I mean, you're, you're looking at $35 That's for enough. For five. So I... I oh, it's not outrageous. No. I look at, like, Ryan, I hear what you're coming, but giving it to a wrestling club that's part of the school as a not-for-profit, probably not an issue, but if you start giving it away as a cancer benefit or something to where that would get into different things, to where somebody would say, why are we giving it to this benefit but not to that benefit? But if you get into where it's whether it's wrestling, whether it's soccer, whether it's a softball team, I think that's where I think we could safely do it and nobody would throw a flag. We'd have to be prepared for any sport. Yeah, yeah to come. Yeah, come. Yep. That does a banquet with silent auction to... So I think at this point... have to have a consistent plan. If, if we do do it, we never give away more than what we're talking about today. You know, if we do a, a day pass for five people, that's it. We don't go any further than that because then we're going to open a can of worms with other youth sports. There are a lot of sports that do <laughs> silent auctions yeah. and yeah. banquets. And well, there's a car wash going on right now at the hardware store. I saw it by now. So, um, you know. Yeah, so, I mean, where do, you, where do you stop? Where do you draw a line? And I understand that, too, so. It's different between a business like yours getting to decide. Yeah, versus, I understand that, versus yeah. City using taxpayer dollars to give away. Well, it's the city water I'm using. I just hooked it up to the... <laughs> <laughs> can we give, can we make it five individual passes? Because somebody might say, okay, I, you know, I'm going to give it, I only have one kid. And, and, that, and that's fine with me. So, is, so we can use it as, okay, you give it five indiv individual passes where the whole family can use it in one day or you have, and that's that. We don't yep. go any more than that. It's, and that, that's all they're asking for is a family pass for day or evening. So, you know, I would say you give it away because some people aren't going to have five, you know, five family members. Some might just have, t you know, father, son might just go. So, yeah. so if we give individual. We just do five passes yep. for one day and we'll yep. leave it at that. We never go any more than that. Yep. Yeah, I, think I mean, I think we yeah. should. Yep, yeah, we do. So, so at this point, uh, what would be on the table is uh, we give away five individual day passes uh, to the KM Wrestling fundraiser. Um, so I think we need a consensus on all in favor of that. And then I think what we'll do is we'll follow up with a second uh, notation saying that this is going to be kind of a cap yep. uh, going forward to at least we have something down. So, so on the first one... Uh, I need a motion for uh, giving away five individual day passes to the KM Wrestling Fundraiser. I'll so make that. Motion. Okay, do I have a second? Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. 
Okay, motion carried. And I think we need to put on as a second um, kind of set in the standard that any other, uh, I would say, not for profit sports team, something, we'll have to figure out how to put it. So, in, for instance, with this Jody Marsh, she, with being the social worker for Dodge County, so either she's filling me with something that we haven't done. That seems like a different ask if it's a, a pass for one person. Versus, right. And that's a whole summer pass versus. Should we send yeah, we to have not, We have not done that. Yeah. I would say reach thing? out to them. Yeah. 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 Okay. Reach out Fair enough. Okay. Yep. That's yep. fine. And that's why I wanted to bring in here because I don't want someone. You well, know, I don't remember giving me with stuff that's oh. not true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she may be thinking of the Dodd Center Aquatic for all. Because I've had sure. people say, well, I got it here. I got it. It's sure. like, well, I thank you very mm -hmm. much. But it says Ace Hardware right on it. You know, but thanks for thinking of us first, type thing. So, um, so I think I need a motion for approval that we then cap uh, any other f uh, gifts of pool passes would be a five one day individual passes to be given away to any other club that may come asking, but that would be the cap of. Uh, I'll make the motion. Okay. Perfect. Do I have a second on that? I'll second it. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Okay. Motion carried. Thank you. Okay. Um, speaking of the pool that we're on here, I just got a quick question. How has the capacity been at the pool? So obviously so everyone's heard about this. Yeah. I don't even have Facebook and I know. Yeah. So here's my opinion. Your pool pass is a cheap way to get you all the time you want at the pool, right? How do you manage if someone comes in and pays for their day pass and then, you know, a patron comes in with their pool pass, you can't go in there and remove someone who's already paid. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it's going to be a first come, first serve. Mm -hmm. That's just how it is. Unless there's someone who can come to me that has a better way of managing it without you know, with being fair, I'm from a business aspect of it. I'm super happy that we're at capacity. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. I hate to turn down people. That that's not what I would want to do. But I, someone comes and pays for their first time. I you can't go in there and say, hey, you know, sorry, a patron's here. You gotta leave. How long of a time are these daycare centers there? Are they coming and staying for? Three, four hours? Are they coming for a couple would, hours? I, they're probably a couple hours. I don't think they're they're not there all day. No. They're there before they close. And maybe that we've talked about camps coming. Maybe we set a limit on time for camps. Because they're See, that would be the easiest way to do it. They're supervised by staff. That then we don't have to be like, right, who did a day pass, who just walked in on their own. We can cap it. You get two hours. Because they, they, one nice thing about having like a JLH or PK or any summer camp that comes, they're bringing supervision. They're bringing adults or high school kids to watch a cluster of kids. We have a lot of families that take advantage of the pool as free daycare. Sure. Mm -hmm. To me, that's a bigger issue mm -hmm. than being at capacity with JLH there. They Absolutely. pay just like anyone else right. did. Mm -hmm. And when I call for a golf <coughs> tea time and they're booked up Saturday morning, I had the same opportunity to call ahead of time that yeah. anyone else did. Just because you're a member doesn't yeah. mean you get first raise. So I, I see where people are going with that, but at the same time, when it's full, we're at capacity. We make mo we're making money, yep. and it saves taxpayers. Mm -hmm. I would maybe a cap in hours might be the safest thing next year to go with. Yep. Because they still get an opportunity to come, and they are very routine. They're Monday, Wednesday, Friday, whatever days they come. They've already got a pre plan. And it might impact some of your Rochester communities that might bring in a camp or your YMCAs or some other local schools that come in, but they still get two hours. I worked for a day camp. Two hours is about enough at a pool. And that's, that's something that uh, we should definitely take into consideration for next year. And, in, and honestly, even if we reached out to those groups and say, hey, you know, realistically, what, you know, how long are you guys spending there? You know, can we cap it at three hours or whatever it may be? You know, they may say, yeah, that's great. Actually, we only need two hours, really. So, I mean, that would definitely, I like that idea. That's great. What's going to happen? What happens, Ben, if we know JLH is coming at 1 
and we we roughly know how many kids they're bringing typically on a great right. a ballpark at least yeah. yeah what happens if we know we're going to reach capacity when they show up we'll be over capacity so if they were coming at one and you had a huge influx of people come in at noon to one knowing they wanted to get there before them what would end up happening you know that's something that they, we would have to we know that the they dates have to wait coming. until if they've got 10 spaces, they let 10 in, and then when more kids come out, so then they, they can let so 10 So they have to do the same thing right. that everyone else right. has. And right. they're, they're, they're not, a few times. Yeah. Yeah. They're not they had to. They had so to. Uh, they so they're, they're abiding by the rules that right. everyone else yep. has. That and that's, that's, that's only good. fair. Mm -hmm. that's, mm -hmm. yeah. But I think they have to be prepared to come to the park to do <laughs> have another activity if that's the case where mm -hmm. they can't get That's the nice thing about having our playground there is that it's like, hey, you know, give it 20 minutes to a half hour, hour, yeah. go play at the park. There's a basketball court, yep. there's a... Archery uh, range. A new, mildly, <laughs> usable tennis court. <laughs> yeah. Like, there's enough for them to do while they wait. Mm -hmm. I don't see it being a problem. Absolutely. Um, I couldn't find the capacity on the website. Maybe that's something we want to add as well. And, and I think we should, you know, I guess I didn't even look Abby, about that. Abby posted on what it was last year's manager. So she, she commented on a few things, too, because people... They don't watch these meetings. No. They don't come to them. They just we got a lot of new people. staff this year yeah. that are really trying to figure things out on the fly. So, yeah. unfortunately, the citizens <coughs> aren't quite so patient, yeah, patient with patient, that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are we at capacity almost every day? I wouldn't say every day, but I, it sounds like we've been at capacity quite a bit for, for you know, when we, since we've opened, which I love seeing that. And I hope we continue that. Yeah. It is. In my well, opinion. we've had an ideal summer for hot. You know, we could use some rain. Yeah. <laughs> I look at it. That I, way. I would. I would give up some of the pool capacity to get some rain. I know. Well, at least let's just cool. have it happen at night. <laughs> Do we give families when they sign up like a one-page sheet of the rules? Or, hey, when it's 70 degrees, we're going to close. If it's below 70. Like, because people were even asking, well, they, didn't, they don't, people don't always go looking for things. They just want someone to tell them where, what it is. But if, at least so, if we give something, besides putting it online, then we can say, well, we gave it to you when you signed up. I don't know if that would be a very efficient way to do it. If, if nothing else, if we could post it on the window when they walk in, yeah. saying, okay, you know, if the temperature is below this, chances are we're going to close. Yeah. So don't be pissed. Yeah. Or, you know, this is our capacity. Be mindful that if there's, you know, this type of people here that we might have to turn people away for a little while. Do we post when we hit capacity on, like, the face, aquatic face? That I don't know. I don't, yeah. I honestly, I don't think we do. That I might, that think. might help, too, because that's where a lot of families go to get their information. Sure. And if you reach capacity, have the aquatic, whoever the, uh, runs the aquatic Facebook page, manager or whatever, have, have someone post, we're at capacity right now, estimated time could be Is an it? Hour. I'm just thinking in my head, a digital sign or well, we don't have that. But <laughs> I understand what you're thinking Yeah, I understand to, to what put you're it thinking about. Inside yeah. the pool or to a place where when people are driving to the pool, they're going to say capacity full or at capacity or, and just mm -hmm. post different rules that may pop up. Like the parking ramps, huh? Kind of, yeah. Cool. A little fancier. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but to have something, and like I said, it's something. I wonder if they could send the big text out. Cause but that, just because I was experimenting last year, I signed up. But I haven't really gone. But I've gotten the notices every time they've yeah. closed because it's cold. I get yeah. a text message. Yeah. So, I mean, they could do something like that, just a mass text so, out there. So, if you get somebody like me who tries not to be on the phone because it just is, you know, that's cheaper, than, that work. that's cheaper than putting up paying for a digital sign, though. Right. right. You know, we already have that. I mean, we could easily but post for, something on the window, though, just saying, okay, you know, this is our capacity or this is our rules as far as. You know, if it's going to be storming out, yeah. you know, we're going to close. And I'd rather get the text before I leave my house than drive all the way to the pool and then Absolutely. The sign. That's well, it. I'm just thinking of secondary because in my case, I'm not going to get that text. I'm not going to sign up for it. But if I decide, you know, let's run to the pool today. Yeah. And I'm going to drive by and go, oh, they're full. I see the capacity sign is capacity full. 
you know, then I'll just keep on moving. So I'm going for the people that don't get. He'll go home and get on Facebook and complain. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even get on my own Facebook besides do my wife tells me, did from you like see? JLH, do they get in the water with the kids? No. So are they counted in that capacity I, I think so. Uh, I would imagine they're in the because facility. they are in the facility, yeah. Yep. But I know they don't get in the water. But yeah, they would be counted. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to ask this because now that makes me wonder. As a parent who watches his child but doesn't go swimming, I pay for a pool pass. When you have JLH show up, do those staff have to pay for a pool pass? Because they're essentially doing the same thing I am. I'm only watching one kid. Sure. That, that's gonna, that can open a separate can of worms because if a parent, I don't know, is there a way to have parents that don't swim? Do they get to get in free then? See, that's, see, that's, that's a tough thing because I could, as a parent, I could go in there and say, I'm not going to swim, and then get in there and say, F you, I'm going to go swim. Yeah. Where those, those instructors or, uh, you know, babysitters or whatever, for lack of a better term, yeah. they're not going to swim regardless. They, yeah. they don't come there to swim. So that's, I mean, I understand where you're coming from, 100% agree, but you can't. That that gets into like but they, a, they pay a group fee though, right? I think so. Yes. So no, each of the kids. Are they all I individually? Oh, oh, I no. thought I thought we should have had a group fee for them last <laughs> year, <laughs> and we chose not to. Do, Ronnie didn't <laughs> want to do that. Sure. I do think that right. they either should be capped in time, or they should be charged a small fee for bringing that many kids into into the area, because it's we're basically being used as a second facility. Well, I think I think the easiest thing would be to look at a time frame. Yeah, I, um, I would. I, I I think just leaving them as an individual pay would be best, mm -hmm. but I think we can at least look at maybe a time frame just to maybe ease the citizens a little bit. I'm guessing that those agents agencies like JLH or Pre K, they're they're probably requiring that their staff don't swim so that they're out there monitoring more. Right. So like you said before, that is a benefit for us. But I think it's fair to contact them and just say, you know, we're struggling with capacity and, you know, how much time do you usually stay and could we cap it at two hours? Right. I think that's a very fair, fair thing. Is there anything stopping us from doing it this year? Yeah. What's that? Is there anything stopping us from saying July 1, we're capping it two hours? I'm, 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 I'm very scared to start adding rules uh, now. No. Yep. I think we just, you know, we're going to have to deal with the blows as it is. Yeah. I, we're going to get them regardless. That's one thing I've found out. It doesn't matter what we do. Someone's going to be upset with how we do it. Um, it's just, can we minimize it? And I think so far this year, I thought we've been doing pretty well. I know there's some, there's some very minor things that I know the pool staff, with everyone being new, that we can work on. But I think for the most part, we have minimized a lot of the complaints. But I don't want to jinx myself, so... <laughs> If the workers are not paying people that come there, that would be easy justification for, as a non-paying person, you're allowed here for such and such number of hours as a supervisor. Because otherwise you have kids that have paid their fee. They can swim all day if they want to, right? Yeah. Essentially, yeah. But, so we can't really limit them, but we could limit the non-paying people. But then do we really want all p parents knowing that, oh, if I'm a non-paying person, I can go in there for and watch. And how do we navigate that? I still think it's a good idea, but you know there'll be someone that's. I think just with those groups that you know they're going to be watching, then you know they're not going to be swimming. I don't have a problem with that. When it gets down to the parents, you don't, you just don't know who's going to say, oh, I'm not going to swim, but yet they got their trunks under their pants, and then next thing you know, they're like I had belly flops. When, when you rent the pool, it counts by head, not by swimmer. Right. So I went to a pool party for my niece last weekend. They had to pay for me, but I didn't bring a swimsuit. I wasn't getting it. It was cold. <laughs> right, right. And maybe eight other adults didn't get in the pool but they had to pay per person. Mm -hmm. So that's, there's a difference there. You're telling someone if they rent the pool, we're going to charge you just to walk in. If you bring a group of 100 kids and you have staff, we're not going to charge you because you're not swimming. There's a difference there. 
Um, so that's. It's almost like it's a gate fee if you're inside the gate. So I, and if the pool rental is for a max of two hours, for anyone that wants to rent the pool on a Saturday or a Sunday, then maybe two hours is a good limit for groups that come in over 25. I was say we probably have to have a, a bottom head count on a group. You know how you got a group of five. Does that trigger a two hour? Or does a group of 25? So that would be the other side of JLH Olson or another daycare, or another organization. Because well, we only have 18 kids. Because we are we are providing a space that any business that brings kids doesn't have. Whether it be PK, whether it be Oxbow Park with the YMCA, whether it be JLH, they don't have a pool space. And so when they bring 25 to 100 kids, they're, now, they're using taxpayer funded space as a third or second facility. That's something to think about. For sure. So do we say if you're a, a, an organization you know, how low of a head count do we go? Or do they just say we're 25 individual people, but here's my chaperones like that? No. If we're not, if we're not going to put any of this into effect this year, would it be okay to ask our pool staff to just keep track of how many groups are coming in over 15? To give us an idea, and then at the end of the summer, we can talk about this again. Because if we're not going to put it in effect this year no, anyway, but, yeah, it's something we definitely got to talk about. But we also got to find out, like, so how big of is a, where is a, where, at what point does a group start? At what co what head count? Yeah. And I think I think if we just ask the pool staff or the manager, whoever, if they could just have a you know just a piece of paper taped on their counter, and if a group of more than 15 comes in, you know, they make a tally or, and sure. say 15 or something. If we could require that this year, it would give us some data to base our decision on. For next year, because yeah. is 25 our max for fam like a rental, and then after every tw after the 25th kid, it's salt or person it's X number of dollars. So that 25 is a good. Yeah, 25 is a good target number, but also you also yeah. You know, and I and I'm not up by the pool, but you know how many organizations are coming in with less than 20 you at this point? I saw two buses there last week. We drove by to go to the pool and. I saw two buses and said, let's go to Manitoba Park. <laughs> to the fast uh, and one. And that's to the fast and one where all the puppies that, are running? Yeah, <laughs> it, was my own, it was my own fault for not getting there sooner, but that's awesome to see it full. So yeah. I yeah. I didn't go complain online. I just said, no, let's go somewhere else. Unfortunately, you look at it in a different aspect than yeah. most people. <clears throat> are they coming from Rochester, do you think, the buses? Did you just happen to see where One said Bluff are? Valley. Yeah, I don't know. Where is that? Is that down Lanesboro? Yeah. That that's what I was You always have that Bluff Valley, Valley Christmas you, light drive, you can see, too. That's what everybody's I would say anywhere within a 60 mile, 70 mile radius, you're going to see people come. When I was at the Rochester Y, we used to go to Cascade and Apple Valley. Like, people go to lacrosse. Like, mm -hmm. when there's not that pool in Rochester right now, <coughs> places are going to, this is. Yeah, uh, that's what I was just going to say. Attractive is spot. next year that pool in Rochester yeah. going to be done? Yeah. So then we might, see a, we might see a little bit less to come. Right. Too. But we still have a guideline put into place to yep. where, mm -hmm. yep. as they fill up, they're still going to come this way if that's the case. So, okay. Well, all right. Well, sorry, I asked a question about how the pool's going. <laughs> that wasn't even on the agenda. Well, on my sheet, I knew it wasn't going to be a topic. So, uh, so yeah, if that's reasonable for your staff to do that, I think that would. Be I great. think we could we could figure out what type of groups and how big of the groups that we have had this year. I don't and, think that's a how problem. Long, how long they're staying? Yep, too, and then and then we can potentially address that for next season. Yeah, yeah I don't I think, think that's, that's a good idea. I think that's a fair statement. That was a correspondence. Is part of the salt. <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's move on to the uh, uh, park improvements uh, plan for the tot lot. So. We have, Ronnie had budgeted for some wood chips um, for Lions Park and Veterans Park, which I think we stand pretty sufficient as far as with what we've done. I know he expected some settling. Um, so essentially, we'll, we have budgeted for wood chips that we don't necessarily need this year. Um, I don't know if you guys have been up to Tot Lot, but it's full of sand and grass and weeds and looks like crap. I know it's an old park. Um, it's off, is it 4th Street? 
4th Street and then 4th Avenue Northeast. Yep. It's that really little one. It's just a regular you know where lot. Eric Groke used to that live? Lot, yes. That right next yep. to his house. Yep. Yep. So obviously the equipment there is very old. Um, mm -hmm. Tim is hell-bent on us getting that out of there. Um, the problem is with if we remove it, we have to put something there, right? We can't leave an empty lot. At least that's my opinion. So we already have new edging in there. My plan is to remove the sand, get wood chips, get some or get some blanket down, put the wood chips down, dress it up, um, put a bench in there, remove the. There's a trash can there that matches all the ones that we have down Main Street. Uh, we'll put a new trash can out there to <coughs> make it look nice. Um, do just do some minor things that are cheap and cost effective to dress that park up. I mean, we could potentially be painting some. There is a swing set, well it's two swings, but it's a pirate themed swing <coughs> in the back. If we have enough chips and enough edging, I would like to wood chip that out and make it, you know, ADA compliant. Um, that was one way for me to dress up a park that is ugly and not attractive um, without tearing it apart. My which leads into the next one, which my goal would be to then plan for the Northeast Diamond one. Um, I think that is probably the more realistic and more in need of an actual modular. Um, I kind of looked at what Ronnie had done for the Meadowland Park, which is probably the newest one. Um, realistically, we're probably looking at I'll say ten to fifteen thousand for the edging, the wood chips, the base, and that's I would say that's a fair estimate. That would be, and then the next step would be a swing set. I figured that's another five to six thousand, and then a two through five modular, which would be anywhere from fifteen to twenty-five thousand. Now the modular is probably overestimated because they do deals certain times of the year for these playgrounds and it all depends what you know I would like to collectively decide on what we would like to do for a two through five you know I know this is going to be a process a year you know few year process and trying to get something out there but just I would like to dress up tot lot for cheap make it look nice not like a you know like we don't care about it it's the forgotten park essentially um, Tim really is wanting us to tear that thing out of there and he sent me a link for a playground that we could get at Sam's Club for $2,000. Well, the problem with that is it doesn't meet our ADA requirements. I actually met with, or I called uh, our insurance company today just to make sure that that's a bad idea. And they, and it's, I understand what he wants to do. He wants something new there, and I completely agree, but we can't do it cheap. Um, and, you know, those playgrounds that you get at Sam's Club or wherever you want to get them, Fleet Farm, Home Depot. The rainbow type yeah. thing. They are those meant those. for a one-family use, yeah. and that's that. We can't risk having something. And, and it has always been that, and that's where it's been <laughs> troublesome to get playground modulars when they start when you say fifteen and twenty thousand I'm thinking thirty five to fifty thousand uh -huh. for phase one. Yeah, essentially for for yeah. that phase one it would probably be upwards of fifty thousand yeah. if not more. Yeah. Yep, hundred percent. And that's where you know I guess you look at the top lot, it's in a residential area between two houses, correct? Yep. Um are those and you have to look at the, the community or those houses. You know, the demographic of that is not families. Right. No. You know what I mean? Um, that Northeast Diamond is nothing but young families. The North, yeah, the Diamond Park, Northeast yeah. Diamond. Yes. Yeah. What about the tot lot, though? That's that's an older demographic. Right. Yep. How much are you planning to spend just to spruce up the tot lot? So I have $6,500 budgeted for wood chips. Um, I'm not saying all that would go at Tot Lot. We can, if there's extra, I want to bring them to Veterans Park or whatever. I'm just wondering if we took the money that we would spend in the Tot Lot and put it into East Diamond and make it accessible 
that for those tots there, it'll be used more. And then if we could use that tot lot space for something else. Community garden? Seniors reflecting on a couple so of places. <laughs> in a low area. You have to have water there because it's... There is no water out there. There's well, I guess well, there, there there's a hydrant water. somewhere out there. Well, I was just thinking that there's got to be water because there's houses all around it. So you yeah. can easily tie into a water line there. Sure. Yeah. Well, it's easily. Water. Well, not easily. <laughs> but it's, it's accessible. Are you like, sure? We're going to put a bathroom at the Lion, or at Lion's Park. That's challenging because the water issue there. I think it's really shady there. Yeah, we have a lot of trees right. there. And yeah. my biggest thing is I'm not going to cut down trees that are healthy. No, you shouldn't. Um, that was kind of one of the things Tim would like to see is us get rid of some of the trees. And I am absolutely against cutting more trees down. Um, it's... You know, I'm not opposed to using that money, but the fact that Ronnie had already budgeted for these wood chips and stuff, it's just an easy way to dress up a lot. And actually, I did have a gal email me about her grandkids going up there. And, you know, what were, do we have plans with that park? You know, she didn't necessarily say with the equipment up there, which we're not, we can't change that without tearing it all out. Because once we do that, then we have to be, you know, compliant with ADA. What are the pros and cons of just cleaning up the weeds, maybe adding some sand, leaving it sand? So the problem is the only way to clean up the weeds is spray the weeds. And with a guy who has two young kids, I am 100% opposed to spraying Roundup in a place where kids are playing and potentially putting that sand in their mouth. Yep. But I am going to take that sand and utilize it and put it into our sand volleyball court, which needs sand. So we aren't wasting stuff. You know, I'm trying to utilize everything that we have without breaking the bank. Yep. And the nice thing is, like I said, we put new edging up there. I don't know when they did it, but it's the new plastic edging. So, it, you know, we're really not spending a whole lot of money on the biggest cost would be the wood chips that Ronnie had budgeted for. I don't think it's going to take the full $6,500 that he had budgeted, but we could use wood chips to fill in some other areas at other parks, too. Could that be a possible spot for a pickleball court? We talk about demographic of people. We have yeah. adults in that area. My and that's a big cluster of people that play that sport. Only that issue... There's two courts there, though. You wouldn't be able to get two courts in there. If you could, it'd be very... Even just one, because it's shady, which means it'll be nice and shaded for people to play so they're not going to get overly hot. My only issue with that is the off the beaten path. You know, where Lions and Veterans Park, you have that influx. Like Lions Park, you have the view. Everyone drives down that highway, they see that park, they see what's there. I would be scared to spend the money to put a pickleball court there where if we didn't make it known, Pickleball, 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 this road. And then there's no parking. And there is no parking. Yeah. Dumb question, have we looked at just selling a lot? No, I don't, th I don't think we have. I mean... Well, I don't think it could be developed. That's why Blaine enough. or whoever it's gave enough. it to the city way back when, it's because... Sure. Well, and I don't know if there's stuff under the infrastructure or something. There, there's a reason they dumped it on the city, because they couldn't <laughs> build on it. I mean, it is a pretty odd place for a yeah. park, I mean, within our community. Yeah. Um, there's, there's something with that, that yeah. they couldn't use it for building, so they just said, here. And Wait, isn't it, it, isn't it down here, like a hill? you got to go down a hill? No, you got to go up a hill. It's, it's, oh, it's up. Can't. It's high. No matter okay. what we have there, it's out of the beaten path. Yeah. No matter mm -hmm. what's there. So I just think with the people that currently use it, if we could mildly dress it up right. for now, I think that would be a fair... At least I'm trying to do something with mm -hmm. it. So I guess the wood chips down, clean up the borders, get the sand out. Yep. Are the structures, I haven't been there for a long time, but are the structures safe? In oh, absolutely. They're 50 years old. They're great. They're fine. <laughs> <laughs> they were built better than yeah. what we have now. But they, they might they built no, and, and, you know, without us changing anything, that is one thing we'll be doing is going through and making sure that there's nothing loose or nothing that's going to, protrude out for danger. Yes, that's yeah. going to like hurt someone yeah. badly. I mean, yes, it's 50 years old. Yes, there's stuff on there that's going to hurt anyone like any other playground, but we're just going to kind of go through it and dress it up, make sure everything's for the most part safe. 
um, I didn't want I don't want to get into you know we thought about maybe painting up some of the stuff you know making it a little bit brighter but that's just if we had the money to do it if we have the time to do it we kind of we're getting more and more projects you know as the summer goes on but I just that's just one thing that I figured would be easy to do mm -hmm. dress it up make sure people know that we're still paying attention to all of our parks doesn't seem like too much of a cost. No, no. What is the cost of like a 16 by 16? I'm, I'm picturing just a lot. You put a bench, you clean her up, get some nice wood chips, and then just a small little shelter. Just, well, it's shaded the wind that you said. I'm just thinking a shelter will make it feel more parkish. What would you do there, though? That's a pretty costly, like to build a shelter. Just a smaller. Costly. Like, uh, so yeah. realistically, from what you're trying to, what you're talking about, the best thing would be to do something like that on the. Not for a concrete pad. No, I know. Well, okay. So the best thing for something like that would be uh, the corner of, what would that be? Second Street and Eighth Avenue Northeast, you know where that park is. That's in the floodplain. Oh, yeah. and down in the corner. We can't put a playground down there because it's going to wash out if we get a big rain. Oh. Yeah. We could put a structure down there that has a you know pavilion structure, no concrete. Yeah. Put some benches down there. That would be something to consider. But is it worth the cost of doing that? Well, Are people going to use it? That's and that's at least it becomes shaded where they can go sit and rest and read a book or. But there's a lot of sun down there. Reflect. And there's no trees now. There's your community garden space. And that's that's where I initially thought a community garden would be good. There, there's water there too. I'm trying to think of where the height. I don't think there's, there's a hydrant there. right there. There's no, the I don't. There's a creek right there. There is a creek there. Yeah. And pump the water out of the creek. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I was thinking of, I guess. That's what I was yeah. Okay, well, I think consensus on the top lot. Fourth Street. Good. Yeah. Just move forward with it. Or just yeah. get, get to what Chip's going to clean up, yep. pull the sand out, yep. make it look pretty for the, for the summer, and then we can kind of create a game plan for... We can address that further you know, down the road. For, yeah, as we get... Because obviously there's, you know, every park needs some attention. Um, still got to prioritize and, you know, it's still, you know, can the city sell it? Sell to one of the guys that have the houses down there. Say, hey, you let them pay the real estate taxes on a unusable something for the city council to consider. But I don't know why they haven't, but um, not to say one of the homeowners that adjacent to it would want it anyway. So, how many parks do we have to have per houses? Is it or what? Or is it just one per housing area? I, I I honestly don't know. I don't even know if there is a requirement. There is a there is a formula. Is there? I know you could have at least one, but I think it's based one, on the development know. and the size of the lots and what the developer has to give back. Every time somebody to came in and was going to build it, build up in an area, they had to provide money and an area for a park. And I know I had watched some of our previous meetings when Ronnie was still here, and that was there was one meeting where we had talked about with these new developments what they put in for new parks, and I thought the census on that was that they're not putting enough you know, realistically, which that really, you know, that sucks for us in the park, you know, because it's hard to get money. We to can do never that. get land big enough to do it without getting little parcels, which is what we've had to bite off already. I, you know, I would love, I'd love nothing more than to make a name for myself and build some immaculate park, but <laughs> what's realistic is probably not that. I would love to say, Ben Lang and built this beautiful park, you know, <laughs> but. I want. I I know I got to be realistic, but I would love to see like Northeast to be a shadow of Veterans Park. You know, obviously without the pool, but you know I know we have future plans to put another ball field in there, and it's so close to the school and nothing. I hear nothing but good things with um, the Cass and Manderville Girls Softball Association with how often it could get used and how often a new ball field over there would get used. Um, I know it's in high demand having more ball fields. Um, it's a huge thing. We need them, but it's just we got to have the money to do it. So that I mean that really leads into the East Diamond Playground module. Yep. I know I talked well, about that, that a works. little bit. So but, yeah, let's go. Let's go to the. We're good on top lot. Yep. Yep. Okay. Let's go to the East Diamond Park. So yeah, and like I said earlier, you know we're probably looking at fifty thousand for that first phase. 
So I'm thinking that I would like to start, I don't know how the budget works, I've never done it, but I know it's coming up, but I would like to start planning on those increments of getting money set aside for that playground. That would be huge. That would be my, I'm here to, park. I'm here to help the park system. As, has the park board ever reached out to businesses to ask for monetary donations? And I have some type of signage saying these are the big businesses that don't like, look at the hockey rink. Yep. You can see all the different levels yep. of fundraising. I think of the, the school. Those part their their facilities their playground the elementary it was heavily funded by raising money through booster thons so given by businesses by individuals and that's all donation there was no buying butter braids or buying cookies right. that was straight just here's money for running around a circle could we look at asking businesses when we're ready for this and we have a plan saying could you help donate either monetarily or time to help build it? I, I, I think that'd be a fantastic way to try to get some extra income and try to maybe make this move a little quicker. Yeah. Um, I, I'm 100% I'm for it. I think that would be a great way for a, to see what kind of community we have. You know, I just had my probationary review and my biggest thing was I grew up in this community. We're still my opinion, we're, we're a growing community, but we're still a small community. And I hate to see us go away from people looking out for each other. Everything's, oh, you got to do this. Follow the rules. You can't help people. Out. Well, that's bull crap. There is, there is limitations. I could, someone's tree is 14 foot. I'm not going to call and say, oh, that's not a boulevard tree. You know, we can, a, we can we'll still help it, yeah. people out. Now, don't get me wrong, if you talk to me a little rudely, maybe I might say, well, <laughs> sorry, dude, you're outside my limits. Or, but I just, I hate to see us try to act like we're Rochester when we're still Casson. So I, I would love to see that, I would love to see if we're still that community. I'd love to see if our businesses would still be willing to chip in. Does that 50000 include a swing set? Or just the yeah, it would be the two through five, and then a swing set. So then the next, my next phase would be the five through twelve, which that's where you get into that sixty thousand dollar range for that modular. And I don't know, maybe I'm I'm overreaching what we need out there, but not really. No, if, no, if, no. if you look at, you, I want to throw us back on take take your mind back for those that have that are old enough to remember this. <laughs> <laughs> I know who you're talking um, about. Let's, yeah, let's, go go to, let's go to where Shopco was. Mm -hmm. Okay, before that, that was our park. Okay, and we had a three phase. Two was it? Did we get two? Did we get to, do we get three, to the third? Three phase. Like we got to the third. So we, you know, we made our steps. It's, it didn't seem like it took long to get there. Where you put in a, you know, a plan. Say, first year phase one. Two years, you know, three years later or two years later, here's phase two. Next, you know, within five years we had you know, a full nice playground and then also the, you know, the swap of the property and the shop will comes in and we moved it. Okay, so it's not out of the realm no. to build this. It's And you, you talk of the uh, um, East Ivan Park, whether it's ball fields, picnic shelter and playgrounds, you've got a, you know, a capacity kid. There's your little small west, your veterans park. Now it's going to be the Northeast Park keep it the same if that's the case but and that is all families there I mean it, yep. that whole and, and, and that's where the, if I turn the clock back 25 years to where we didn't charge enough to the developers to get these monetary funds to help build our parks you know we were kind of not say it wrong but we've been drugged through the grass to try to help ourselves to get up to make sure we can get these parks done so um, so council's job and you know get these funds from these developers in here and we talked about that and you know, we want to build some land, more dollars or more funds have to go towards something to put towards this not just well I'll put in a you know a gravel parking lot no you're going to pave it too you know we just got to get tougher away from the parks but could, could it even start with a swing set that isn't very as costly as a modular I just know that little kids swing and yep, swing and, and I and I'm Absolutely for that. 
you know, thing is, is we're going to have to build, obviously we're going to have to build the pad first. And I get that we can add on to it like we did to the veterans. You know, we ended up, you know, adding on around that swing set. That's fine. I don't have a problem with that. I just wanted to give somewhat of a realistic number for what I'm thinking. And I'm, I don't know. I've never done it. I look at it as what my kids play with, too. You know, my kid, yes, yeah, she loves the swing, but she loves the slides just as much as she loves the swings. Realistically, of course, your two through five is going to be your priority as far as, you know, who's going to be using those playgrounds. You know, my daughter gets bored with the swing in about five minutes, and then she goes down the slide, and then she wants to go back to the swing. So that's why I put those two together because they're highly used together. I mean, my daughter's not going to go swing for an hour. She, she might be up at the park for an hour, but she's bouncing between everything. My grandkids have swinged so long that they uh, have thrown up before. <laughs> Three of them out of the four. <laughs> <laughs> they are big swing set lovers. So. Um, well, obviously we have, you know, something in, in plan. Yep. You know, get get some things on paper, get some things as a focus. What do we do? What phases? Um, and And my goal is, you know, I want... I want this park board to be a park board. Like, I feel like since I've started, it's been a lot of, well, this is what we're going to do. Like, we haven't really made any big decisions, right? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through my catalogs of my two through five playground modules. I want us to collectively decide on what we want. I don't want to be the only one that's deciding on this. I mean, they have... 60 varieties of different two through five stuff. Well, I want, I don't want to be the one. Yes, I have kids that are that age, but I don't want to be the one making no, that decision. And, and I agree. And nothing against Ronnie, but he always kind of picked us as this is who we're going to go through because this is who we've always done it with. We've never had the option dollar wise. To I'm not opposed to, so who he's gone through is they're they're reputable companies. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, so I was involved in finishing off the Meadowland Park. Um, the last installment that we did out there, the kids that live out there, they're going to be ripped from their torso up because that's <laughs> all it is, is upper body playground stuff. <laughs> I'm like 100% against that. I don't, I don't think that we shouldn't have some of that stuff, but I mean that whole playground module that we installed is nothing but monkey bars and stuff that you have to do with your upper body. You know, I want more of the old school where you're climbing up a thing, walking across a bridge and going down a slide. Like that's what really that's what kids need. I don't know many you know, ten year olds that are monkey, you have know you seen the fat kid? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I won. <laughs> I just I just want I want more than my opinion on these playgrounds. No, so, and that's fine. Oh, sure. and, and we'd love to give if you bring us a, you know, if you could do a 3D image in there in the middle of us where we could. Probably next month because budgeting starts like August, September now. Okay. So you should have an idea what you're looking for. I'll have for an idea for that two through prior five. Prior to presenting to the. Yep. Absolutely. If you narrow it down to 10. <clears throat> yeah. And bring it to us. Yeah. And we can narrow it down from there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Would that be fair? Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yep. And at that point, you know, if we can get in the budget and get the budget to do it, that's the biggest challenge. Mm -hmm. you know, that's the thing is we're just a recommending board. but Yeah, but yeah. I just I feel like we we don't get to make decisions mm -hmm. that impact our parks enough. Does the cost that you mentioned include installation? No, that would be us installing it. I, I was on Manorville Park Board sure. in a short stint as a city council member there. And their park board always got local community members to come help. Whenever they put a small park in or they had to do some wood chip type stuff, they did a community event. With, especially with us looking at Northeast, we have Meadowlands, but that's not a big park. Right. If we're looking at turning East Diamond into the big park in Northeast, I wonder if we could advertise that as a day to help come so in and help. I know there's some logistic things. And, 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 and I, I look at it, okay, so you... You know, with Manorville, they had two people yeah. on staff. Um, many hands doesn't always make for easy work. Yeah. I look at it when I worked at the golf course and we'd do volunteer cleanup. You'd get 20 guys out there, 10 are probably actually cleaning up, and then the other ones are walking around with rakes. Social and hour. Socializing. So 
I get concerned when you ask for too much help. I, I, I would love to see that many community. You know, if it was something like, if we were doing something like wood chips, right, spreading the wood chips out, that's something that I wouldn't have to be concerned about. Okay, are we, you know, are our posts plumb? Are we level? Are we at the right depth? That's where I get yeah. concerned. Where my guys, we've done it, I don't know, a handful of times now where I'm comfortable with the amount of guys that we have is probably the perfect number for setting stuff. And unfortunately, good and bad with the way these parks are built is, you know, we can set three, four posts and then we have to wait, you know, a few days for it to dry. Yeah. So you're only, you're limited to how much you can really get done in a day with the concrete and everything. Yeah. I, I do like the idea, but like that would be something where it's like, okay, with putting the edging in, that's fairly simple. We could get many hands to do that. Uh, raking out the wood chips that's a that's something that we all hate as staff members to have to do well all community members would be okay with that yeah. so yeah. I, I do like that idea how about asking the businesses to donate towards that how soon could that start and whose responsibility is that to do that I mean we could start that as soon as possible it's just actual plan if, if we can present that to the business members you know these businesses saying this is what we're seeing and I've seen you know Ronnie's and I don't know if it's help from Miracle or Burke or the equipment people that actually will like do the 3d imaging of it on a poster board you know I've he he stored those things since he's built these parks so I, I'll have to look into that. This is, you know, like I said, this is all new to me, so I'm not 100% sure where to start making these steps. But I think if you go to a business with a, you know, a picture showing you, showing them what you want and what the cost potentially could be, obviously probably going on the higher side of that, they're going to be like, okay, well, this looks awesome. I would absolutely donate to this versus you just going up there saying, well, I want to build a park, you know. Right. Sure. So go to the chamber. Mm -hmm. Chamber of Commerce would be the first step, and yep, then the yep, chamber yep. could put it out. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, yeah, start with that, and because that's going to be your best outreach of the businesses that really are involved. Not saying that they're businesses that aren't. That's I don't want to make a point that if you're not a chamber member, you're not a you know an important part of the group because you are. So, um, but that'd be a good start to. See where it goes from there, because any business member or not, you know, even not necessarily. Well, you're probably going to want inside the the tax base. You know, if you start out reaching, there may be some funds, but at that point, you know, like I say, it's not my community, but um, any money given wouldn't hurt. So, okay, we'll see what uh, we can come up with. And like I said, I think there's a little bit, a little bit of urgency to get this done. At least to get some monies, asking for the council to, you know, let's try to get phase one and get some money to improve the park. So, parks. Period. So, okay. Well, let's uh, let's go on to park vandalism concerns. Well, I had just. Yes. I feel very strongly that as we're talking about new um, parks, whether it be adding our, you know, wheel wheelchair accessibility. Um, things or building this East Diamond Park that we have a plan in place for vandalism so I had talked to Chief Josh and he said you just have to get it on our on the Park Board agenda so that it follows the right path to get it to um, the council and then to their department I asked him a little bit about you know what are they doing with the vandalism that has happened um, he didn't really give very good answers other than to say that they had just filed charges for a big fight that happened at the park. Um, so they did follow through with that. Um, and I think that was between, you know, there was two people that were charged. Um, it's not just a Casson problem. Um, we took the kids to the Wasika, brand new Wasika Park and the bathrooms were closed due to vandalism. You know, so um, I don't know what other towns are doing, but I just think um, I could use my parents for example you know they're not going to be for spending any tax dollars because they know that every, you know the stuff what's being vandalized and and dad's very very you know we need to catch these kids we need to catch these kids so 
if it's cameras, you know, um, I don't know what the answer is. But Josh just said if we can get it on our park board uh, agenda and then it can get passed on to city council, that would be very important first step. Um, I don't know, you know, what sort of thing with the cameras oh. you've thought, looked into. <laughs> Last night was Monday night, right? Yes. Yeah. It's Tuesday. Um, last night there was vandalism out at Veterans Park. Go figure. Typical area is the concession stands. Um, they actually took gate valve covers and which are probably 15 to 20 pounds, right? They they sit in the ground. They cover up a valve that you know water got we turn whatever. They had those hucking them over the concessions onto the roof in the, our shed where we store hoses and batting cage stuff and uh, actually put a hole in the roof of our uh, shed, um, essentially destroyed the door to the shed. Um, Matt Frankie, thankful for him, put a stop to it, got the names but it sounds like we can't really go any further unless we were to catch them in that on camera. My fear with the cameras is I don't know how new the ones that we have are out at Veterans Park are. I mean, you can sit there and watch them do it. We, we watched them destroy a pop machine at 11 o'clock last year at night. Um, you could pretty much make out the make and model of the vehicle, but you couldn't see exactly the individuals, so we couldn't really go any further, I guess. Um, That's coming from the police department. Yeah. Um, so my next step is, actually, I reached out to Scott Rose today, and they use trail cameras. So we have a, a specific spot that is consistently being vandalized. I mean, you go up to the door of that concession stand, and the handle on it is dented in all the way around because kids are trying to smash it. I don't know what they expect to get. Money? I don't know. They're, I mean, they're going to be in for rude awakening when they get in there. But So we're going to, I'm meeting with Scott Rose tomorrow about putting up some trail cameras. He potentially might let me borrow some for a little while till we can buy some. I'm looking at avenues of, okay, we need to get ones that, get a good quality picture, but also aren't going to break the bank. Because unfortunately, I don't know how much Ronnie's spent on that surveillance system. It sounds like quite a bit. It doesn't take long for, you know, two, three years down the road, parts for those things become obsolete. Yep. So is it worth spending that kind of money to put cameras up in our parks? Or are we better off getting a handful of trail cameras and shifting them as the vandalizing. We, we're not going to nip that in the butt completely. So if we can get cameras where it's consistently being done, yes, then maybe we can do something about it. But it is driving me absolutely insane. I mean... And that, that word gets out to everybody. I was going to say like what, the what, of the pool. I mean, yeah. it spreads like wildfire. And we actually... And I don't know how much truth is to this, but I do know there were some pickleball players being harassed at 6.30 in the morning at Lions Park. I don't know how much truth is, because that was, I heard that third hand, you know, so I'm not sure. One guy said, yeah, cop contacted him and said this was going on, and it's just, this is ridiculous. I don't, Lack of supervision. I mean, I was so busy in sports when I was a kid, I never had a chance. And actually, I think my the fear of my father was scarier than fear of cops. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. But I think if we can get some trail cameras would be a great first step, and that's what I want to go with and see if we can't try to get these kids pinned for something. Because they, they just have no, re rep you know, they don't get charged with anything right now because we can't prove that it was so-and-so or, you know, like I talked to uh, Jesse Hazel and he has an idea who it is, but until we can actually prove it, and I understand where they're coming from, we have to prove it in a court of law. You know, I actually told Josh, I said, couldn't you put the badge down for like five minutes and whoop their ass with a baton, you know? <laughs> And I and I and I understand 
And we can't, yeah. Push a button. That's right. Well, <laughs> where were you? Really? We'll back it up. <laughs> Thank you. Can I suggest maybe sirens? Our church got vandalized during COVID, yeah. and then we got cameras, which they're working so far, and we have sirens that go off. It doesn't go anywhere, but we had, we watched it. Some guy was there at 3.30 in the morning, and you could see him, and the siren went off, and he took off running. They took off running. They were afraid that that was going to go to the police department. The most thing. Okay, and that, that would actually be something that would actually be worth maybe putting with those concession stands, you know, to to really scare those people that if they're going to get in there, there's an alarm well, and cops are going to be there. If, they, if an alarm goes off, that means it's triggering someone, so the cops okay. are coming. Right, that's what they think. Triggering or not. You know, and, and unfortunately with, you know, like I told Josh, I said, I can't expect you guys to be up there 24-7. That's not what you guys are meant to do. So it's it sucks because it's like they make their rounds through there, and then they leave, and the next thing you know, the kids are coming out of the woods. or I don't, I don't know, but... Well, we've we've dealt with this on, you know, kids and their skateboards jumping off the picnic tables and stacking the picnic tables right on camera. And the cameras were down here, and when the police department was down here, and this is what they saw. But uh, the issue with the cameras that I've seen over the years of being the park board is you can't have enough cameras any, everywhere and anywhere, and who's going to sit there and monitor it? And if it isn't monitored, which it isn't anyways, it's just sitting in a room recording, Who's going to take the time to go back and watch that based on a time frame that you don't know what it is? Right. That's why I like the availability of the trail cameras if we can find them because then we can we don't have to perfectly position. You know, kids know where these cameras are placed. Mm -hmm. They're they're not dumb. They can see them up on the poles or whatever. So now we have availability. Okay, you know they're getting wise. They're going over to this area, so we can move them. So I I just think. It, once I meet with Scott and see what, what type of things they use and what, you know, what to look at for picture quality to make sure we're not, you know, I don't want to break the bank, but I also don't want to buy something that's going to show a grainy picture and no, not be it's, worthless. It's, the, it's catching the element of surprise, but on the other side of, you know, that's going to be the challenge is if you can't prosecute them, what's the purpose of the cameras? Besides right. just, hey, you've been caught. Your friends are going to know. You're going to know. Your parents are going to know if that's if it's kids. That is, it might not be, you know, older adults that are saying, "Go ahead, and try to catch me." It's I don't want to signal all kids, but um, you know, it, it's it's a new type of recording device that's going to be much cheaper than a camera system, yeah. obviously. So um, it's a start. Got to do something. Yeah, and I and I agree. It's this is getting out of hand. And Would you um sad. um put that down at Lines Park too? Yeah, so I think I think what I, I mean obviously right now I get that we do have, we definitely have vandalism at Lions Park. Yeah. I understand that. Um, unfortunately I think the stuff, the damage is really occurring at Veterans Park. Um, and it's, it's evident that it's in one area at Veterans Park, so I think I want to start there and see, okay, we'll spend you know, $1,000 on some trail cameras and see how it works. If it works well, then we can maybe invest in or maybe move depending on what's going on. So, I mean, ultimately, yes, I'd like to get some down at Lions Park. Have the bathrooms been vandalized at all? Not yet, no. Not yet. Actually, I've heard pretty good things. The, the worst thing I heard is we need to get some soap in there. So I was pretty, pretty impressed with, <laughs> with that. Okay. But time will tell. I do know that those two brown buildings by Lions Park, those apartments, because my son lives there, they just put up cameras facing the parking lot, which is towards, it wouldn't be towards the um, picnic shelter and the sure. play equipment, but it's towards the... the, the ball ball and ball I know cameras. we just installed some street lights down there. I don't know if they're up yet. It's been a while since I've been over there, but I know the electric department's been putting, they put, I think it was four street lights along the parking lot. So, I mean, hopefully that helps. I mean, it's going to light it up. Mm -hmm. So kids aren't quite unsupervised, you know. We can see a little bit more from the road. And that's, you know, that's part of the problem about a veterans park back in that area is not quite lit that well, and it's kind of off the beaten path, so. Well, part of it is, you know, lighting us, that's not a big thing of it, too, you know. And I'm trying to think at 6.30 in the morning if somebody were to 
you know, Ralph's to pick a ball. Aren't kids sleeping at 6.30 well, in the morning? That's a, so that's why I said I'm so not was, sure how much it, truth was. Was it another fight. senior? Ralph's thing a senior? So. I don't know. Ding Dong Ditch has become very popular yeah. in town, too. That's yeah. really and actually, old. Josh told me about that. I, um, I'm not even sure. He said some building. I wasn't even sure what building he was talking about. But it's primarily the older folks that live there, and these kids are running through there, pounding on doors, and then running out. Like... Mm -hmm. It's just we need to try to figure out how we can nip this in the butt to yeah. some degree, I guess. Because well, and, and, it seems like it's the same group of kids that are doing it. It's not and like it, it, and it goes through in, in you know, a round robin. And then they're going to get on to where they realize that, well, that's not what we want to do. Let's go do something else. Let's go steal a car instead. We're, and then the next group of kids will come up two years later. We're not going to solve it, but it would be nice well, to try At least we to can address it so yeah again do we need to have do you need to meet with the city police i mean does scott have is scott able to, maybe scott can talk to josh after you meet with them and say so we have a plan of what they're going to do if we do get something on camera could, could we if we have them on camera could we say they're no longer allowed on the parks like they're trespassing yeah and and that billy goes on the park property any city property that's park property they are trespassing because then they can be arrested for trespassing. And that's actually what Josh had brought up because he talked about, you know, some of these things that they get charged for, just a slap on the wrist and nothing happens. Um, but he did bring up that today when I met with him about, you know, if we can get so-and-so on camera, we can make sure that they're, you know, quote-unquote banned from the park, and if they get onto the parks, they're trespassing. If we catch them, you know, we charge them with that. And he said, so that might that might actually work to deter these kids a little bit more if we could actually put a a little bit heftier of a charge on them, mm -hmm. you know. So that was definitely an option that Josh had brought up, and I was 100% for it. It's just now we as the city have to take that step of, okay, catching them, getting a good quality picture, you know. It makes you wonder, does, is there any, as you talk about trail cams and security, any other cities, and the, and the police department may or may not know, but any other cities in the state of Minnesota or something currently using something like that as these as devices? School does. School does? The school, when they did the kindergarten uh, outdoor classrooms, uh, it was vandalized within the first week. Uh, really? Yep, and so they put up trail cams that connected to the principal's phone on an app, and so anytime she saw snowmobilers driving through, uh, kids, animals. She got notified? She would get notified. That it's just like a ring doorbell. Thing. Sure. Mm -hmm. and she would get a notification, and one night she went out there because there were snowmobilers driving through that area sure. and on the school property. So she used trail cams as well. So you could maybe talk to JJ okay. over at, high, at the high school and say, hey, what did you guys put in? What, did, what app was it? What type of device was it? Because they used several of them over by the So then at that point, it's a... City cast and police department will to take a signal. Who, in this case, who's going to get notified on a trail cam, on a, on a kicked in the I'm, door? I'm now, more than happy to camera. get notified and then forward Move that on there. to Josh or whoever is. You know, if I can get a list of who's typically on set. Yeah, okay. I, I would be more than happy because I'd love nothing more than get one of these guys caught. You know, and just, we just put it on the we put it on the cast and city Facebook page. Hey. Is this your kid? Talk to him because we're Can we put it on the, the city website? The city... <laughs> yeah. We'll start Channel, a channel page ban children of the parks or something. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> live, live video feed that's of the what, cam that just it, popped off. Is this what your kid? With the ding-dong ditching. One of the kids has got on a ring camera. Parent went on the parent page, said, Hey, this kid's ringing my doorbell. If it's your kid, can you talk to him? Sixth comment. Yep, that's my kid. We're going to talk about it. Well, okay. So, it, the power of social media. Yeah, this face covered. I know who he was. I'd had him in class, so. <laughs> so it's. It does. I, there is, but what is, is our curfew ten? Is that what the curfew is in Kansas? It's so supposed to be. Yeah. This is kind of an ordeal for me because technically Veterans Park closes at eleven. Yeah. Um, I was unaware of that because I had to deal with the issues of softball. And I put my foot in my mouth and said it closed at 10 because that's what Tim told me, and I didn't actually look into it. So then I had to recant what I told them and said, all right, it does really close at 11, but also respect the people that live around there. Yeah. So, but I think like the actual town curfew isn't that. So the minors is 
that's why we have that 10 o'clock right. siren. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I always remember running home at 9.45 because I knew that because siren was well, coming. <laughs> well, I think the siren goes off at 9.45, didn't it? No. 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 Yeah. 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 Okay, so it's, it's at 10 o'clock time, time to go time home. To go home okay. Yeah. So. I know Josh keeps talking about his reserve officers. You know, is it something where, you know, we ask him to use some of the reserve officers after 10 and... and they're, they're short so staff right now. Yeah, he's, he's really struggling right now. He's, he's in a pretty hard spot, too, with yeah, trying to get staff. Yeah, they're short. You know, they, they lose guys, but they can't get guys back. So <coughs> he's, he's probably struggling just as much as anyone else. Anymore yeah. he, does, he definitely does a thankless job, I would say. Okay. Well, let's uh, go from here on the next one. Good? So this actually worked out perfect that this is on here, and now I'm meeting with Scott Rose, so. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Hopefully we can get something taken care of. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we're going to hire uh, park workers for the Festival of the Park. Do we have any applications for these? No. Or the people that pick up, right? Yeah. Pick up the garbage and stuff? Yes. Her husband, yeah, my husband and son um, are going to do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, our question is, you know, because um, we talked about adding, oh, that's not, okay, I'm on the um, festival committee too. So I had I had brought to the committee to, um, I wanted somebody hired to wash the picnic tables because they get really gross on Saturday. Um, and I try, but I'm in charge of all the vendors, the bathrooms, kids activities I I just can't do it anymore um, during that weekend and so they said well those people emptying the garbages have extra time you know in between emptying garbages obviously and so can we ask them to do the tables so my husband and son are going to do both um, and whatever is the easiest if you want to just pay them or if you want to make a donation to Special Olympics, Brandon would then turn that in, into the Rochester Flyers. Brandon plays a sport every season in Special Olympics, and he lives with us. So um, last year he raised $3,300 for the Polar Plunge. Um, so we are okay with either either one. Um, I don't know what you have, you know, what that has cost in the past. Um, Brandon cannot drive the Gator, but Todd will. So, because Brandon doesn't have a license. Sure. Um, so, um, but Brandon's an extremely hard worker, and because we are there the whole weekend, he's kind of required to be there, so it would give him something to do, and um, if it can raise some money for Special Olympics, too. I think it's got to be we would have to pay, pay, them. pay them. them. Pay them, and then you guys donate it, because okay. I don't think the city could just start donating to the Special Olympics without having a... Right. Where is this from? It was from sure. somebody else's labor. That's totally fine. fine. So, but that would be a. Uh, Last um, year it was twenty dollars an hour yep. <coughs> that we paid. That seems about right. Yeah. So, do you need them then to fill out applications, employment ac applications? We haven't the in the past. Okay. Okay. No. And how do they keep track of their hours? Are you going to? So we usually have, have sheets sheet. for them. Okay. Yep, and they'll just fill them out. Okay. And so empty the garbage is probably just once on Friday night. So, so, you know, I'm pretty new to it, but I know that, like, they were on, like, the kids were on call, like, the whole day. So, I mean, I, Friday night, yeah, maybe is okay once, but it might be worth checking more than once. Yeah. yeah. Well, well. <laughs> they're up there the whole day with you. I get that. <laughs> yeah, so, there, so, but I know, like, you know, Saturday they were on call all day. All day. So they, they made sure every garbage can was emptied, you know, not overflowing or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so, they will be on the grounds the whole time. Yeah, so. so that actually, you know, this is a blessing in disguise because I know it was a challenge because even, you know, one of the, my coworkers had to get his kid to do it, you know. So it's nice to have, you know, yeah. your family helping out because otherwise I don't know if we could get people to do it. It's been like pulling teeth the yeah. last few years. So I can tell you from my side that we're very appreciative that your husband and your son are willing to do that, so... But when do they enter their time then? I mean, do they enter their time that for that whole day on Saturday? Yeah. Yeah, the oh, whole day. Yeah. They're okay. technically on call the whole day. They're right. working the whole day. So, okay. yeah, absolutely. Okay. And then on Sunday, 
is pretty minor. Probably a Sunday morning is a more probably, that's probably your once. So what, to like the parade or so, and yeah. then that's about it? After, because people go down there after the parade. Sure, okay. It's, it's getting to be more popular. Our, you know, our Friday night and our Sundays have really grown in the last couple of years. Um, there was a pretty decent influx last year um, after the parade, so that's, you know, nice. So and and you would probably know more than, yeah. you know, any of us with you being that involved with it. So they just I, need to keep track I would of say at this point there is a delimitation no. to what they're at. Okay. I if think they're throwing away trash, they can be working. Mm -hmm. No, I might have some concerns if they're working Monday morning. Yeah. Still, but <laughs> I, I, think, I think you know better than any of us. Um, are you okay with them also being in charge of washing the tables then in their downtime? And That's fine. Absolutely. We just yep. don't have enough people to make that happen. So, mm -hmm. um, and it needs to happen. <laughs> I wash them all on Friday when they get placed. But after that, I just don't uh, have That's the where the fire department comes out and they just take their holes and... <laughs> <laughs> What's that? They're busy that weekend. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Now they're having it at the Legion. The Legion. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. They're busy. The yeah, I saw that on the council. Printed, so. That'll be questionable. <laughs> so I need a motion to uh, hire Todd and Brandon Purvis at $20 per hour uh, to do the... Festival in the Park cleanup, which is, will be the rubbish cleanup, monitor, that's to say rubbish, garbage cans, and in this case, wash down tables as need. Um, thank you. Do I have a second? Yep. Okay. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Okay. Motion carried. Okay. Well, yeah, thank Todd and Brandon both. So now's a good time to have Brad, Brandon learn. <laughs> just kidding. No, we don't want him to drive at all. <laughs> we just got that. city property. We're insured. <laughs> <laughs> we don't even allow him to drive the golf cart that weekend. So. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, all right. Any more park stuff? Hiring? Nope. Good. Okay, so application open for the park board seat. So we have in front of us one. Yep. Is that right? Matthew Clemens. 102 Second Street, Southwest Cass. And if you have it all in front of you, I don't know if we got a chance to read it yet or not, but I'll give you a minute because I haven't. So, and just see what he's kind of filled out here. So, um, Yeah, that's mm -hmm. the only problem. Taking vacation time to come to our meetings. So yeah, that's, that's not fair to him. But no, right. I'd say that we need to keep looking. Well, we part of right, and I think part of what we ask anybody of the board here, if you can make nine out of twelve meetings, is kind of the I want to say the good base. You know, twelve out of twelve is nice. We always have opportunities where we can't make here due to vacation sickness and and. Just like the person you're sitting next to or something. I don't know. You know, we don't meet a lot, so the times that no. we do meet are pretty crucial. And, and it is, you know, set in stone of, you know, time, date. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think you're right where it says, you know, I, know. <laughs> I, might, I might be able to take vacation yeah, during those meetings. Um, you know, if we want to reach out and ask, it's like, well, it's not based on... If, if it's based on him taking vacation time to be here, is he willing to do that? Nine out of 12 times. Nine out of 12 times of the year, and there's going to be one time when we don't have a, a meeting, maybe twice because of the you know, winter agenda, but you leave that open, he's going to say, yeah, but at what point do you take his vacation time not to take a vacation for himself? So Can we table it for a month, see yeah. if we have more applications? If yeah. we don't, then we give him the opportunity, and if he just is able to take his personal time, that's his choice. Yeah. But then at least we have someone in that time where he's here, and if we have to look in for someone else again, at least he's filled that position for X number of months or whatever. And, and who knows, he, his employer may allow him to do this without taking that vacation time. I, I think mm -hmm. we table it, see if we can get some more applications. I think you're right. Okay. Yeah, I don't think we're in any vast need to fill a position at this yeah. point, so... Um, so I don't want to be too 
non-selective because of lack of selection. So, is this on on uh, Facebook and stuff? That I don't know. I I put it out on I think it was Casa Manorville Parents Group saying there was a park board opening to play at City Hall. That's all I said. Yeah. And in the newsletter that yeah. went out with the utility bills. It was just in there. <laughs> well, That's the problem. You guys don't you know about it. You didn't show up to the survey, did you? <laughs> no, no, I did do that because it was on oh. Facebook. Oh. Okay. <laughs> no, my wife is amazing. She takes care of all the budgetary stuff. Mm -hmm. no, I, well, I know it was on the Cass Manager yeah. Parents yeah. site because I put it out there saying there was an opening. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I know that much, but um, what else is there? I don't know on Facebook mm -hmm. for groups. It goes back to that digital board at the pool. So that's a park board. <laughs> so that, how, about, how about the sign, the city sign? Well, I was just going to mention real briefly the one on Well, nobody sees here. it right now because... Uh, yeah. Well, nobody sees it anyways. Well, how about Hard Hank? Hank? But now you're not able to drive past it. Don't you have a digital sign? I, <laughs> I have a really good one. You <laughs> take that to the pool and put it up there. <laughs> I have the name of the company that can supply that. <laughs> you loan it out to us, the rent program you got there. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Bring it back, I swear. We'll <laughs> <laughs> for it. Sign here. It'll be rent. safe in, in Veterans Park, believe me. But, yeah. but, yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> Perfect. Spray paint it black. Right. Oh. <laughs> oh, but that's, but Chuck, you got a point, you know, what, does the city have any plans with the city re, re, electronic sideboard now by the, by the post office? I don't know. You know, because one of those things is hard to read. If I remember right, when they got it, you guys have to program up here, and it's so hard to program. Welcome to Dactronics, which I didn't go with them for that reason. Ours is a lacrosse sign. Was lacrosse, but I thought, okay, so maybe, but was it lacrosse, or I thought it was Dactronic sign? No, we, we went through lacrosse sign company. Okay, so that's the first. <coughs> Sorry, problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not a good. It's not a good. No. It's not a good. Easy to read sign. The LEDs are horrible. It's. <laughs> it know. might be better now that there'll be a roundabout because the drive slower. Put it like in the middle of the roundabout. How about, <laughs> like, how about <laughs> one of those signs like the, the Legion <laughs> has, and they'll put it out there saying steak supper? What about one of those things like the Legion has, and so steak supper? The portable signs that got to be moved every three days. Yeah. Well, yeah. But still, it's better than nothing. And put it out there at the detour. You know, I nobody sees our nobody sees the city sign now. So I think we're putting a lot of effort into something that doesn't. Yeah. 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 That's fine. <laughs> yeah. All right. We got an applicant. If anybody <laughs> knows of anybody, we really go off on tangents, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> if anybody Ronnie, knows Ronnie of anybody, us well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is this a good time for me to bring up the forestry division? Forestry. Yeah. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so, that takes off the funds of, off Can of we do our that side. This winter? Yes, yeah. I'll bring it up again this winter. It's only about five months away. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so we'll uh, we'll table the, uh, yep. the hire the park worker and see what we get for next month. So. Um, I'm sorry, park board, uh, not park, board, park board person seat. So um, let's go down to old business. Castle Manorville Girls Softball Association batting cage. Yep, I'll, I'll try to make these quick. So um, the uh, Castle Manorville Girls Softball Association, it, the batting cage got approved for Northeast Diamond by Joint Ventures. Um, we're currently in the planning process. I actually just ordered their cage today should potentially be here by end of July. So basically on the city's side of it, we're gonna dig it, get it prepped. Um, uh, Rick Harwood and me are looking into potential contractors to do the uh, concrete work. But basically I'm just informing you that it was passed and we're looking to move forward and we're gonna get it installed this year and it'll be a great contribution to that park. Um, hopefully take some of the traffic off the field itself because that field gets abused. That's that East Diamond? Yep. It gets abused with the amount of traffic. Putting it on the north, so back 
outfield, or are you yep. putting it? Yep. Yep. We talked about another field, possibly. Yep. So that would, you know, it would potentially be between the two fields when we get to that point. Um, and there's even, you know, we had, me and Rick had actually talked about a possibility of a second cage going up at some point. Um, obviously, that's going to be down the road a ways, but um, just the availability of the space between the two fields is going to be crucial. But yeah, so we're going to move forward and we're going to get it done this year and it'll be a, a nice contribution to that, that area. So finally okay. something worked out. <laughs> <laughs> Baby steps. Yeah, oh, good. baby steps. Uh, good for the joint ventures to join in that too. So. Well, and you got a best bell hoop up there. Yeah. That was so. <laughs> not one in the road anymore. Yeah. So it's just you know, and <laughs> and unfortunately, I've been fighting with one of the neighbors over there about putting his uh, his makeshift, you know, his regular portable basketball hoop. I warned him before we put that new one in. I said, hey, you know, we're going to be putting a an actual hoop there I need you to get your stuff off city property because it's a liability if that falls on a car we're gonna be in trouble and he said no problem I said I gave him two weeks never moved it so I went out there and hauled it out to the shop I knew he was gonna be calling me I know him and he calls me he said what'd you do with my dang hoop and I said I got it I said but I gave you two weeks I said why did you not remove it and he's like well my wife got on me that I know I should have done it and then come again you know we put the new hoop up he puts his hoop and I called him up I said get your hoop off my property because we're gonna have issues if it's there I said I've given you warnings I said I'm, I'm firm on this I said if it's there again I said I will take it and I'm gonna bring it straight to the dump I said I'm not dealing with this yeah. and now it hasn't been on our property mm -hmm. that's a dangerous street to drive down because there's that little bit well, of and that's the problem there. is then he put it into the road and it's yeah. like yeah. I'm not gonna fight with people on this it's off my property but that's a busy road it's a very busy road but and I also don't want a, a portable hoop in my parking lot where it could fall on a car and damage a car and then we're in trouble mm -hmm. yeah. like that's not right mm -hmm. no. this looks amazing only yeah. it does because awesome. it's, uh, and it's in color. Ronnie would have had it in black and white. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I really wish you would have said that because these some of these are in color and then the well, <laughs> so you took the sharpie marker, made them yellow. That's okay. That's that works. Well, look Oop, at the wait. next. Yeah. You okay? So you got the first one done. Okay, so this is a brain teaser for me. I really want to do this project. I really think this is a huge um, need for our community. If not, we're, I want to be inclusive to everyone. I really love the idea of trying to support everyone from whatever handicap abilities that they have. I don't care. Now my concern is with the one that was presented to us, I'm concerned about the safety aspect of it. So from what I've done, I reached out to the League of Minnesota, our insurance company. They have concerns about the one that was presented. Um, with it being on chains like that, it may not be dangerous to the child on the swing, but I'm more concerned about the kids that are going to be horsing around on it that don't belong on it. I think that was more of a residential. Right. Mm -hmm. Like one um, family. So they sell that, set, that swing right there commercially through certain sites they say that you put them at schools now how much of that do I believe I don't know I started looking through reviews and stuff and people asking if there's if it's ADA compliant well realistically there's no ADA rule for a swing it's just about approaches to the swing okay. but it doesn't meet the ASTM, it doesn't meet the CPSC, which are all other <coughs> avenues. So basically, from what I gathered from the league, is that we shouldn't put this in our park. Now, this is where things get kind of unfortunate. We're looking at $40,000 for the one that I'm proposing. Um, but that's all concreted in. 
there's where the swing actually sits is there's might be an inch and a half underneath so no one's going to get pinned under it there's no way of really actually getting a child to get caught under it like they have taken this is from our commercial distributor for playground modulars so <coughs> That was my concern after, and I know Chris nudged me on the shoulder at that meeting and said, be careful, and he had pulled up the thing. Same thing I was looking up right when, you know, I was just like, I don't want to put something in our parks that's going to get us in trouble, and I want us to be safe, but I want us to be inclusive to everyone. So I know Chris had mentioned that he would reach out to me about p potential grants and, and opportunities we could you know avenues we could take but I also wanted to make sure that we as a group were aware that I am not okay with this proposal right. and I think it's great idea I just think that we need to make sure we're covering our end and I think they're going to be thrilled with this well, I like I the ramp yeah no yeah. one's going to say why did you go with the six so a longer term solution to this yeah. right. correct durability yeah. and, and maintenance right. and Very long term much so. now Research. the unfortunate the other unfortunate thing is the only way to probably put this into our parks would be northeast um, the footprint of this is well over what we have available up at Veterans Park um, originally without looking into the research and stuff of, of the swing I we I in my mind I already had a spot place for the one they proposed until I started really digging into the safety aspect of it but I mean we would have to do a whole new area for this swing at veterans if we were to try to do it up there And I, I mean, I have the blueprints for this to actually see. I guess I don't have the actual map of how big it is. I have that on the blueprints in my email, but i just not sure if we can include it into the current area with how big it's going to be. Would it cover the entire basketball court? It would be pretty darn close, I would say, at least at least half of it, three quarters of it. Would it be easier to move a basketball court to somewhere else and have this on top of the current basketball? We have our new basketball courts through Kelly Raymond and the, at the Lions sure. Park. You have a basketball hoop now at East Park. You have multiple basketball hoops in the parking lot at the elementary school. Would it be easier to put this on top of the basketball court and then move a basketball court somewhere else? I actually wouldn't be opposed to that idea. You that know, because realistically, we could we already lot. essentially can get our mats put down, our our you know fall proof mats mm -hmm. yeah. put down into that area, and we actually would have the potential to add maybe another piece of equipment there that would be more inclusive to a handicapped child. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, you know, I I hate to like segregate it, you know, there's from there's a different playground but at the same time that's a perfect spot it's close to the road the parking lot yeah, yeah. we can easily pour a sidewalk right. to get to that without it yeah, that's a fantastic that's idea okay. we've I added agree. enough baths we've got and I'm not saying get rid of basketball mm -hmm. courts but I think the families really wanted in a park that they use mm -hmm. and with the pool having that facility where you can put kids so in so my water. only <laughs> my only concern is there will, I don't know how much, but there will be backlash until we get those basketball courts made, the new ones. I'm okay with that. I would much rather help someone in need out versus someone who couldn't, you know, they could go down the road a half mile. Well, these people, they could go, you know, the kids that are using the basketball courts, they can travel anyways. Right. They're going to meet, you say, well, let's go over here this time. Could we short term put them at the end of the parking lot? I don't see why not. I mean, it would just be park there there's enough space it'd be awkward for a little bit I mean what a, what we could potentially just do is do one hoop and do a half court type thing yeah. instead of trying to do a full court we could you know probably save the hoop that's there yeah. well, I mean we could save them both really yeah. um, I think people would understand because of the need to have this at that park with bathrooms with lighting with Close to the, the other playground. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so they for another kids. There's other things mm -hmm. for them to do. 
I just I feel like keeping it at the Veterans Park is, is something that's really going to help that part. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's what the families <coughs> really want. So I mean, uh, thanks. And don't you think this is like this is like the most expensive part of the project to do the swing and the ramp? Like mm -hmm. if we added that that merry-go-round thing, that can't be as expensive as this. I mean, then we could add maybe one or two little pieces down the road. Yeah, absolutely. And and we're not even saying that we have to do another uh, handicap inclusive piece of equipment at that. You know, it'd be nice to give them options to do. Um, but we could also do is just some sensory things where it's something that they can just touch and deal with. You know, that might not be quite as expensive as this. Um, so this will get into, you know, we're going to have to kind of distinguish whether we want to move forward with Northeast Diamond or this. There, There's going to be grants, yes, that will cover a good chunk of this, but, you know, we got to figure out I guess maybe the next step I suppose would be to meet with Sarah, the one that presented yeah. it, and just let her know, okay, this is realistically what we would be willing to put. I think just within that meeting when, when Dean came and spoke and said we'd love to give money from softball, I think we'd have a better chance of getting money from the community for something like this because we mm -hmm. have your top, the top part that you want to yep. clean up that's within a, a couple blocks of East Diamond you also have a brand new player out of the school, which is a couple blocks from East Diamond. And I just, I could see this getting more push and more support. I can see the Chamber of Commerce, the, the business is saying. Be more willing to do something Because we this. don't have anything. Because it's a more specialized right need <coughs> than saying, here, I'll just put money towards another park then. Yeah. And joint and ventures too. I brought up to, to Mark and joint ventures at our last meeting and they really liked this idea. Um, so they were they if when they have money back in their budget, this will be when, something they. And Sarah worked with me at the um, at that golf tournament, and uh, so I know she presented it to. Um, the one that does all the um, all the lottery, all the gambling stuff, Brett. Is it Brett, his name? He, Brett. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, and so he said, absolutely. Send me send me what you're thinking about. So even like the Legion is already. You know, probably very I think, willing to. Ryan, for sure, I think you're right. I think people would be more willing to put money towards something that's going to help out. I would put money towards that versus, like, I just I see that and I know the kids that would use it and we need it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need it badly. Okay, then I think at our next meeting I'll get Sarah here and just inform her that this is my plan. Not that hers isn't a bad plan, but realistically this is where we're going to have to be I want to make sure that we're being safe and we're and actually you know what just thinking about it even more now it's probably a better idea to have it where you had suggested because that might keep some of those kids who are going to be horsing around away from it you know I, I that's actually a perfect spot I I'm really glad you thought of that yeah and I've watched a lot of kids use the basketball courts. I used them as a kid, too. Yeah. They were so nice when they built them. They're still nice. But we've added enough where taking it away for a short period of time, a year or two, isn't going to drastically impact kids' ability to play basketball in all other parts that we have. And, I mean, realistically, it's not like it's that expensive to build a basketball court. I'm not, you know, we can make do with putting a, a hoop up in the parking lot for now. I mean... I don't think that's a bad idea. You're asking Howie if we could throw one in the hockey ring parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> could this be put in the monthly utility newsletter once we approve a picture, just a tiny picture saying if you want to donate to this project? Because like you said, you would donate to it. I would donate it to it. Um, that they can come to City Hall and make a donation? I mean, once we actually finalize something, right. yeah. Right. Once we have a plan, like a blueprint right. of here's that space. Mm -hmm. so here's and what this I'll is do. what it's going to cost. Yeah. And so yep. I'll plan, <coughs> I'll put Northeast on the back burners. I will move forward with talking to Tim from Flagship and meet with him and show him the 
potential place where we're talking about and see if we can't get something drawn up before our next meeting so that we can actually get like some actual visual plans of what we're wanting and then you know we'll have to look into I know Sarah said she's done some grant writing right. so she would obviously be a you know a crucial Good part resource. in this as far as trying to get these grants well and if Chris Petrie and I'll have knows, to reach out to Chris yeah if he knows makes say hey you know we've approved the plan that me and you both looked at now we're going to try to move forward to get the grants you know what what are the options where can I go how do I go about it Yeah. <laughs> Are we going to need any type of motion on this to proceed forward, or just um, wait till next meeting? Wait to till next meeting. And maybe wait till next meeting until I have a plan. Some, yeah. And, and then we can approve the plan. Yeah. 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 Well, that'd be August, wouldn't it? Because we don't usually meet in July. Um, we can. It just depends on if we have. If we and have few things, well, so we, we probably will. want to talk about the cameras and stuff. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's so that's for sure, cool. for sure, we can have this on the agenda and and mm -hmm. the surveillance of the park. So I mean, it's not like we won't have anything. Maybe we'll mm -hmm. make it a little bit shorter, but right. I think we have two fairly crucial items yeah. to put on that. Yep. Yeah. Okay. You don't mind? Okay. Okay. Any other uh, any correspondence? Yeah. Uh, for the Veterans Park, the wall that was updated, um, City Council talked about there was the plan for the plaque, mm -hmm. correct? The um, sign. The sign. Um, with the deterioration that, we're, that we were starting to see again in the base, correct? There were some issues with the base well, around it. Yeah. Using, uh, they mm -hmm. suggested they would came back with um, using those funds to correct the problem around the base of the wall before putting a plaque. Well, the sign has already been ordered and it's shipped. Yeah. So that's, that's already been approved. So that's yeah. going to get done. Um, my only issue is I told Tim, and I think I sent you the, the bid too, but did anybody go back to Dingley? They, whoever hired Dingley is one that needs to go back to Dingley. He's the one that was hired to do that wall. And he should have fixed that in the fall, I and he didn't. Who hired him. My I understanding don't know. was that it was the the restoration group or the your group, right? We didn't hire him. So we need to figure out who did. That was well, before the city I paid him. So I'm sure it's the city. The city must have. We didn't hire him. We sure. just okay. We raised funds and gave our funds to the city. We but I think I think somebody needs to go back to Dingley and get a hold of him then. I reached out to Rich who helped on the wall, but Rich didn't do, he wasn't hired to do it. So I didn't know if Dingley was back, but I understand he's back in the U.S. again now. So I think somebody needs to reach out to Dingley to find out about him coming back and fixing that. Because Rich, of course, would do it, but he wasn't going to do it free because he wasn't hired to do it in the first place. So that's my issue that somebody needs to reach out well, to the city, the city should have contact because obviously the city would have to get Gottman check and all the signatures and so it's just a matter of reaching out to Dingley does he even know about it I don't know well he came back and inspected it though at the end so mm -hmm. but was it deterioration when he inspected or is it deteriorating to our visual now to where it's been like that since the sidewalk was done so it's been like that in the beginning I noticed it at Festival in the Park last year, so it's it so, should be so fixed. Dingling, Dingley, Ding, where, mm -hmm. Mr. D, um, sure. you know, was from familiar with the problem. Was there comments? I mean, before you paid him in full, it's obviously, uh, you know, if, if if he was aware then and you guys were aware then that there's an issue. I didn't know. Yeah, that's that, what's got to go back to. Yeah, I didn't know he'd been back. I didn't. I, I didn't know he had been back to do any work uh, after the winter. So well, back in the spring. Some records of that. And so yeah. So it wasn't me that did the correspondence with him. Okay. Well. So, sounds like the city's just got to reach out. Yep. Yeah. Just got to reach out. Council wanted to pay for the 
fixing of it when there was money left over before we bought the sign. The money left over went for the sign. Yeah, and they so. said they would like to see the wall finished before the sign was bought. Well, <laughs> they approved it, so I ordered it. <laughs> so and it's been shipped. So um, I think that somebody needs to go back to Dingley, whoever did the hiring of him. I didn't know him. Let's start with the, let the city contact him, and if you got to send him pictures saying here's the issue, what's the warranty, and what's the resolve on his side, let him get back to the probably the city at that point and go from there. So, okay. Any other correspondence? Chuck, are you gonna be here next month? Yeah, I'm gonna be in Maine. So. Um, I'll have a lobster for each of you. <laughs> <laughs> I like to go pass it out like you normally eat. Well, I could bring you some little, you know, keychain that this is what it looked like. A little bigger, though. <laughs> or bring you a shell or something. But, yeah. what, um, is, what is the... So it looks like July 18th is the next meeting. Okay. If yeah. this calendar is correct in front of me. Okay. The third Tuesday is July. Yep, I don't July know about 18th. here either. to go pick up a granddaughter because the other one's having her tonsils out. So that fair week. Otherwise, the July 25th would be the 4th. We have occasionally had to move it back a week if need, but based on what the agenda is, things to talk about. And we're looking at another park board member next month, too. So yep. So, okay, well, put her out there, so. Um, if there's nothing else, I do need a motion for adjournment. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Thank you, everybody, for your time. Seconded. Anybody second it? I'll second. I second. I'll go ahead. Opposed in favor? Second five by saying aye. 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 Opposed. <laughs> Thanks for pushing that on, Ryan. <laughs> got buttons. <laughs> uh, um, what if you just put a sign that said security? It, cameras.